so good afternoon once again and uh, today i'm going to talk about uh, three more myths uh, that of atis then uh, that of adonis and uh, uh, that of osiris actually they are the gods of uh, vegetation and they basically stand for death and a resurrection death is followed by resurrection fine and i have already told you that uh, you know these myths uh, they basically serve as the objective correlative for the feelings and emotions of the poet is that clear so let us talk about the myth of atis first see you can find different interpretations of these myths in in different books i mean there may be a number of interpretations and there may be a number of accounts of all these myths so according to one account this this atis was a god of vegetation vegetation and uh, he was he was associated with death and resurrection fine now he was worshiped in frisia and uh, you know in in the roman empire also he was worshiped in in frisia p h r y g i a uh, this is basically the area of uh, the ancient country of asia minor right so initially atis was worshiped in frisia and then later you know he was worshiped uh, you know throughout the roman empire fine now you can find a number of accounts of uh, the life and death of atis so according to one account or according to one interpretation uh, he was a very young and handsome shepherd and uh, he was loved by sibyl sibyl now this sibyl was the goddess of fertility and uh, one account says that uh, sibyl was the mother of atis also right so sibyl loved atis but uh, by some account she was also the mother of atis right but fortunately or unfortunately atis was in love with uh, a beautiful nymph uh, who has been represented as as a very young and and beautiful goddess of nature right so this is the story of love triangle i mean atis was loved by sibyl but on the other hand you know atis loved a, a nymph clear so when sibyl came to know about it when uh, sibyl came to know about the love of uh, atis and and that nymph you know she became very angry and out of anger she killed the nymph fine now the death of this nymph uh, you know it it made atis uh, you know mad in with with grief right and uh, that's why when he was not able to tolerate the shock of of the murder or the death of his beloved what did he do you know he wounded himself under a pine tree and you know ultimately he he bled to death fine now with his death because you know he was the god of uh, vegetation so with his death uh, you know the process of nature stop it i mean plants stop it growing flowers stop it growing fine then uh, uh, you know some of the gods particularly zeus the chief god in greek mythology they made a meeting and uh, all the gods agreed that atis uh, atis should be resurrected each spring fine so in this way this this god atis uh, he came to be linked with the cycle of the seasons i mean uh, you know dying in the winter and you know uh, getting rebirth in in the spring getting my point i mean he came to be linked with the cycle of uh, the seasons i mean he died in the winter 
and he got a resurrection in in the spring fine so you know it it became a part of some festival which which was celebrated in the roman empire and the romans uh, basically they would cut down a pine tree in in the honor of of attis what i mean to say is that you know attis was i mean after his death uh, he was worshiped by by the romans i mean uh, they used to cut down a pine tree in order to give honor to to attis right and at the same time they also used to decorate the tree of uh, this this pine with violets because they felt that uh, you know they felt i mean they felt that that this this uh, you know these violets uh, they have come they have come from the blood of attis fine and that's why they used to decorate the pine tree with violets fine so this this god attis i mean uh, he died in winter and he got a resurrection in in spring that's why winter stands for death and uh, you know spring stands for a resurrection fine so the basic fact is that attis is the god of vegetation and he stands for you know death and resurrection death and resurrection during the uh, winter you know he died and during the spring he got a resurrection fine so this is the myth of attis now the other myth is is that of you know adonis fine uh i hope in your second semester you might have gone through shelley i mean adonis written by uh shelley so there you might have uh, got the myth of adonis clear so i'm not going into the detail i'll be telling it in in very short in in very short and once again you can find a number of interpretations in relation to to the life and death of of adonis fine again this adonis stands for you know death and and resurrection and he is also the god of vegetation right now according to one interpretation you know adonis was a very handsome young man of cyprus and even when he was an infant at that time also you know he was he was very handsome so when aphrodite the goddess of love so when aphrodite you know saw this child uh, she fell in love with this child so what she did she basically hid the baby in a box and uh, she gave this uh, you know to to persephone Persephone is is another goddess of the underworld. I mean, she gave it to Persephone. Uh, I mean, for for safekeeping. Is that clear? So the fact is that even during his childhood days, Adonis was very handsome, and it was during his childhood days that uh, Aphrodite, the the goddess of love, she fell in love with the child, and that's why she hid the baby in a box and she gave it to Persephone for. safe keeping right once again uh, see the love triangle now when when persephone so adonis i mean the child the child was so handsome and so beautiful that she also fell in love with the child and later she she refused to return the child to aphrodite so once again there was a conflict between two two women i mean now they were fighting for the possession of a handsome child right <clears throat> once again zeus the chief god in the greek mythology so once again he he came on the front and once again he tried to to settle the settle the dispute right now what solution was given from the side of zeus uh, he basically said that uh, the child would be divided i <laughs> not the child but the time would be divided between the two goddesses so finally it was decided that uh, during uh, the seasons of spring and summer during the seasons of you know spring and summer uh, i mean which is the time of fertility adonis would stay with aphrodite fine 
and uh, during the fall and winter the period of barrenness and death this child adonis would stay with persephone so i hope uh, you are getting my point so the decision of uh, the chief god i mean zeus was that during the spring and the summer the child would stay with 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 aphrodite and during the fall and the winter the child would stay with persephone fine so spring and summer they both stand for fertility and uh, fruitfulness and fall and winter stand for barrenness and and death right anyways the child grew up and he became a handsome young man and his time was still divided you know between the two goddesses aphrodite on the one hand and persephone on the other hand right now words go that uh, adonis was very fond of hunting so one day when he was on his way to hunt uh, he was killed by a wild boar right now some stories state that uh, this boar was uh, hephaestus 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 basically was the husband of aphrodite and aphrodite was in love with adonis so you know the husband was very jealous and out of his jealousy he might have killed uh, you know adonis in the form of or assuming the form of a wild boar right now one story says that this wild boar was eris eris uh, you know he is the god of war and once he was a lover of aphrodite but uh, he was rejected by aphrodite but still he was he was jealous so it could have been the work of you know eris also means he might have taken the form of a wild boar and uh, he could have killed you know uh, adonis is that clear so once again the story is related to the death of adonis and uh, you know the the resurrection of adonis so once again the story says that uh, after the death of uh, adonis uh, you know aphrodite became very shocked and once again you know he was he was brought back to life by persephone uh, who is the goddess of the underworld and who had the capability to make a dead man to make a dead man alive fine <clears throat> so each year in greece you know uh, you can find the the um, i mean the process of worshiping of adonis and mostly women women uh, you know worship worship uh, adonis fine so today this this god i mean adonis has become a symbol of male beauty and even today a handsome young man is sometimes called an adonis an adonis so this is the myth of you know adonis right now let us talk about uh, the myth of uh, as you know osiris and and you know isis is that clear no this is something very interesting and this is an an egyptian myth this is an egyptian myth right now one account says that uh, uh, osiris is also the egyptian god of vegetation and he was the brother of isis but at the same time he was also he was also the the husband of isis is that clear so isis and osiris or osiris and isis so they both were brother and sister and at the same time they both were husband and wife how so once again there is a story i'm just just going to narrate in in very short right basically uh, uh this is the story of uh, the the ancient egyptian uh, you know kingdom and this is the story of nut and jeb nut and jeb jeb they had uh, you know four children uh, two daughters Uh, Isis and Isis and and Nephthys and uh, you know two brothers Osiris and Osiris and Set. 
fine. So Osiris and Set were the brothers, and uh, uh, Isis and Nepetes, they, they both were sisters. So basically they both were, you know, brothers and, and sisters. Fine. Now what happened? You know, one tale says that uh, Nepetes, uh, she was attracted towards her brother Set and uh, and she wanted to have a child from Set. But the problem was that she was not beautiful like, like Isis. That's why with her magical power, you know, she disguised herself in the form of Isis because Isis was more beautiful, right? And then she tried to seduce Set. But unfortunately, the plot failed. Is that clear? But now what happened? Now Osiris, I mean the other brother, he now found Nepetes very attractive because he felt that, uh, you know, this was Isis, not Nepetes. And the reality was that Nepetes had taken the form of, uh, you know, Isis. Is that clear? And willingly, Nepetes, you know, she, she, she kept assuming or she kept uh, she kept resuming you know this identity or the secret of you know uh, isis fine so from this from this viewpoint uh, isis and and osiris they both are uh, you know brother sister and at the same time they both are you know husband and wife also right now further the story says that uh, you know, Osiris became the, the, you know, king of the Egyptian empire and Set, the younger brother. Now he became jealous of the popularity of, of his brother and that's why he made a plot. Now what was the plot? Actually, uh, you know, secretly he, he took the measurement of the body of his brother and according to this measurement, you know, he got he got a casket. I mean, a coffin like a coffin like box. Fine. Then he organized a large feast, and in this feast, uh, he invited words go that he invited around seventy two guests, including you know Osiris. Fine. Now towards the end of the festival. Uh, Set then produced the, the casket and he announced that uh, this casket will be given to the person, I mean whoever uh, fitted in it absolutely. Actually the casket was very beautiful and all were attracted towards the casket. So Set said that it would be given to someone who, I mean who would, who would come in its sight absolutely. <laughs> right? So all the guests, they all tried and the casket was size, but you know it was meant only for Osiris. So finally, Osiris stepped into the casket, and uh, suddenly, you know, or you just can say immediately, set slammed the uh, lid of the casket, and he sealed the casket, and he threw it into the Nile River. Right. Now Isis, the wife of uh, you know Osiris. Now she was very much shocked and she kept roaming in, in search of her husband's body. And uh, anyhow she found uh, the body of the husband uh, which was resting in the roots of a massive tree. So she brought it back to, to Egypt in order to give, you know, proper burial to the body. But uh, once again, you know, Set found this, this act of uh, you know Isis and now he became so angry that he cut the body into 14 pieces he cut the body into 14 pieces and he threw all the pieces into the 14 directions of the Egyptian empire right once again you know the wife was uh, Isis so once again she collected all the pieces and worse go that uh, she was a lady with, with magical power. So with, with her magical power, uh, worse go that uh, once again, you know, she brought breath uh, back to the life of uh, Osiris. I mean, she breathed life back uh, into the body of Osiris. And then they both had sex and the result was, you know, Horus. Horus came into entity, right? 
so when horus uh, became young he came to know about about the injustice which was done to his father i mean the murder i mean he came to know about the murder of his father then in order to take the revenge of his father's murder you know he he attacked on his uncle uh, set right now both the armies i mean the army of horus and the army of set they both were face to face but you know they both were mighty fine so finally neither god was able to secure an overall victory and ultimately it was decided that uh, uh, you know osiris would be given the kingdom of the underworld and horus would become the king of the living and uh, set would become the ruler of deserts i mean as the god of chaos and and evil right one version says that horus defeated set uh the version that that i have just just narrated in it you know neither god could could win but one version says that uh, uh, horus defeated set and he became the ruler of uh, the ruler of the the you know uh, united united uh, egypt fine so this is the story of uh, you know isis and osiris so one more myth is there and that is the myth of uh, tiresias uh, <laughs> i'll be coming with this myth in in the, the next clip because i feel that the myths may confuse you and don't rely on on these clips basically i mean for the information of these myths you can read different books even you can find them on on 